More employers pushing employees back into the office. Morgan Stanley CEO going as far as telling his workers, if you can go to a restaurant in New York City, well, you can come back to the office as well. This is 73% of workers say that they're anxious, though, about returning. So will these tactics bring employees back? David, think it's going to work? I, I do. Um, look, this is a, a interesting issue. It's one I've been harping on for a year, Charles. I wrote a big op-ed in the New York Post last summer and begging people to get folks back to the office. And my argument was because I wanted to support the infrastructure of the city, these coffee shops, these deli workers, the restaurants, the service workers. We hear so much talk, especially, you know, generally from Democrats and social justice warriors about how much they care about the little guy. And I never saw people care about the little guy less than I did during COVID. I want people back to work. I'm a former managing director at Morgan Stanley. I liked what Gorman had to say. You, if you don't like it, go find another job. But these businesses, their culture, their community, the ability to collaborate is very important. I want people going back to the office. Although, Danielle, everyone says there's a new normal. There will be at the, at, at the least a hybrid that, that, you know, almost no business will be able to get people in every single day. Charles, so I really think it depends on, on the company. And by the way, when did we get to demand for uh, effectively four day weekends? Because that's what you're really talking about. Again, certain companies, certain cultures lend themselves well to people being productive wherever they are. Last time I checked in a democracy and with capitalism, it's the employers who have the say as to where their employees work. I, I think they've got all the right in the world to take the stance that they have. And, and I completely agree with David as well. Uh, again, this is yet another another nail in the coffin of small businesses in America that have been basically abandoned yeah, yeah. in the city centers. We need them back. You know, David, I, I like where you're coming from with respect to the selfishness of this and the hypocrisy, by the way, which is what Gorman is, is pointing to. If you can go out and about in the city, you're not really afraid of COVID. But, but by the same token, we're starting to see productivity numbers. And sometimes, and I think of productivity, it seems like a euphemism, like we could do more with less. So you know, if you're going to push this issue of not going back to the office, there may come a point well, they don't need you to come back to the office. Oh, I very much agree. I'd be really careful if I were one of these people that feels safe going out every night and putting pictures on Instagram, but doesn't feel safe going to the office. And all of a sudden the company's flourishing without them at the office. I think that's a very difficult uh, play on job security. The reality is, Charles, that um, Daniel's right. Every company is a bit different. Even tech companies, can I just point out, the largest leases ever signed in New York City were signed during COVID by Facebook, Amazon, Google. They're taking hundreds of thousands of square feet of office space in Manhattan. So I think that at the end of the day, it's an accountability thing. Uh, Grown-ups put their pants on and go to work. And that's what I believe is the yeah. best model that has served us for many years. Well, a new poll, folks, shows that Americans are actually worrying that all the spending will keep prices rising. Those same inflation fears had the Dow suffering its longest losing streak since January. You know, David, uh, I look at the numbers every single day as you do. So I know wages were really coming on strong in real life against inflation prior to the pandemic. Well, I mean, the, some of this stuff is just uh, insane. Wages were growing significantly in 2017, 18 and 19. It's indisputable. But I, I don't agree uh, that the inflation issue is the big concern. Danielle talked about the fiscal policy side, and I'm more focused there because I think it's inexcusable that we have 9.3 million job openings and we can't fill the jobs. So for someone to come on TV and talk about how there's these great opportunities of wages going up, when people are being paid not to work, they're focusing on a $19 an hour temporary benefit over the dignity that comes from work, which is readily available in this economy. It's totally we inexcusable. It. And, it's an, and it's an unforced error that didn't need to be there. The inflation story has a very inconvenient problem, a 1.4% 10-year bond yield. That's not inflation. What is a problem is the Biden administration unnecessarily paying people not to work. 